Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at Ouija, uh, a reversing challenge from day four of the Hack the Box, Hack the Boo CTF last week. Um, this challenge is a reversing challenge, and uh, yeah, let's jump in, go ahead and jump in. If we go ahead, we get a downloadable with just a single binary, we can go ahead and run it, and it, it's going to take forever. Um, I'm actually going to leave this running in the background because we can check back in on it when we're done and see how far it got on its own. But this thing is just chock full of sleep and things, as we'll see in a minute. And so um, it will, in fact, print the, print the flag out eventually, but not in a useful way. So um, let's go ahead and oops, let's open up a new window. And I will go ahead and run Ghidra. Um, I've got Ghidra set up so that I can run the batch start script. Just It's in my path, but you could also just start it from wherever you download it from. Uh, I'll create a new project, and we will put it in the... We'll come here, and we will create a Ghidra folder. And we'll call the project Ouija. And we're good. Now we need to import the binary. Okay, it's recognizing it as 64-bit L. We'll click OK. We'll drag it up here to the code browser. and when it opens, it's going to tell us it needs to do analysis. So we'll do the analysis and we'll accept the defaults. And it runs down here. It ran very quickly. Um, it's not a very big binary. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into the main function. Um, often, if I, I'll jump into the main function, if it doesn't look like I immediately know where I am, I, I'll probably go up to the search for strings and find some of those strings I was looking for, like that I saw in the output. Um, but we're here. Um, so we can see right away that it's doing, let's see if I can pull this up, pull this over. Um, it does get this local 2020 is the, it looks like an encoded flag of some kind. It's like we can rename that. Um, and then there's there's a sleep here. Here's the, the loop where, let's say, if we call this like I1, because there's a bunch of these, uh, I1 goes from one to, well, let's see, that's gonna be 30, one to 30. Uh, incrementing itself. If it's visible by five, it puts a tab and a new line. So it's kind of creating that walking dots effect. Um, oh, we can we can show this. Um, putting this character is just the dot character, and then it's going to sleep each time. Um, after all that, it's going to say it's done. Uh, here I've got a key. So let's maybe we can call that key, and then it prints and it does this again. Um, we're not going to rena even bother renaming all of these, but we'll call this one i two, and same thing. This is just going to be printing dots and, whoa, cancel, didn't mean to do that. Printing dots and uh, eventually looping it every five characters. Um, then it's going to say, oh, this will do nicely. And then we're going to enter into this loop right here. Uh, no, let's see, this is more more dots, sorry, more dots and sleeping. Um, more dots and sleeping. Here we go. Here we're going to do a for loop over the encrypted flag, stepping through it. Um, we're going to do some comparisons, sleep for 10 seconds. Here's another 10 steps or 16 steps of sleeping. Uh, oh, we have an uppercase letter followed by, let's see, another 20 sleeps, 20 seconds of sleep, wrapping it around, some more sleeps, 16 seconds of sleep. Um, eventually down here at the end, here's look at this one. This one's got 300 um, sleep, 300 steps, sleeping one each time. So now we're getting into many minutes. Uh, but does eventually print uh, encrypted flag here, prints a single character off of it. Um, it changes it a few times here. So here's subtracting from the key. Here it's um, adding to it. Um, we could try to come up with the algorithm for what's happening to this thing and see if we can take that buffer and decrypt it ourselves. But that seems like a lot of work. And I think there's probably easier ways. Well, I'm going to show you some easier ways to get about it. Um, so if we stop and think here, the challenge, what's really making this hard is all these sleeps. Um, so we want to get rid of these. So we're going to actually take a little bit of a look over in the panel that we probably don't look at nearly as often um, over here on the listing side. And so let's go to one of these sleeps right here. We can see that this is done by a call. Um, I've got the some documentation on a call instruction here. Um, so E8, 14, FC, blah, blah, blah. If we come over here and we can see here's E8, um, and then these are going to be, so this is a 32-byte 32 32 destination. And so that is a relative E8 that followed by 32 bytes is a relative call. So it's going to be calling relative to where it is in the current program. Um, we can verify this by finding a different sleep, like maybe this, this, this one was 14 FC FFFF. Here's E8 
10 fa f f f f. Now, suspect we could do the math that this number, this 10 and the 14, is off by the distance um, here. So we're just we're jumping. What we're jumping to is the same, but because it's relative to where we are in the code, um, it's different. So we can't effectively really get rid of all those sleep calls because we'd have to we'd have to look up each one. I guess we could look up because there's probably not that many. We could look up um, those. We also have before each one this move EDI, and that's going to be where the parameter for sleep is put into EDI, which is where the first parameter goes. And sleep only takes one parameter. We can um, man sleep. See if we get an actual man page or yeah, here we go. Um, so sleep takes a unsigned unsigned int of seconds, and uh, so that's you know that's that's what's going in EDI right here. Um, and we'll notice that you know this is a move instruction. So let's go over here. Let's go um, look at the we can look at the details on a move instruction. Now, who'd have thought a move would be so complicated, right? Um, but if we come down here, what we want to do is we're going to move an intermediate, which means just like a constant number, a defined number. Uh, and in fact, we can look at our code and see that it is a it can't be a 64-bit number because there's only you know at most four bytes here. So it's probably a 32-bit number, and it's moving into EDI, which is a 32-bit register. So we can feel like that's probably a 32 bit. So we're probably doing this one right here. Uh, let's see, this one right here, or no, this one right here. Um, and that says B8 plus RDID. So what's going on there? Because we don't have a B8, we have a BF. Um, and it turns out this is actually called, this This is, um, is it this page? Yeah. This page is actually really useful for showing how this works. Um, it uses a three bit register. Um, name value, register value. So you can see here, we're moving into EDI, which has the low three bits of 111. So if we were moving into EAX, we would have that BB8. But because we're moving into EDI, we're actually seven more than that, which is um, BF. That's why we see a BF here. Um, and if we look through each of these sleeps, let's find some more sleeps here. The sleep one, you know, again, here we have our BF one three zeros, um, BF one three zeros. So we can start to say, um, you know, BF one three zeros. What happens if we, how many times do we see that pattern? Let's grab this right here. Actually, let's go highlight this, move EDX one, and we will do a search program text. Uh, oh, I guess we have uh, move EAX one, I think that'll work. Search all, no matches found. Um, let's see, did I do this right? Uh, listing display. Let's see, maybe I'll, let me try something real quick. If I come here and say, right click on this, and do a copy, and then we'll do a search. Oh, for matching instructions, here we go. That's what I wanted to do, let's grab this. Search matching instructions, including operand. So we will search all. And ooh, I selected too much. We have the call for put char in there. Let's clear that out for a second. Um, so we can get rid of all of that. So BF111, there we go. Search all. We can see this happens a handful of times. And so that's right before sleep. That's right before sleep. I'm looking right over here. Um, that's right before sleep. That's right before sleep. That's right before sleep. And so we can see that each time I'm, I push move one into, o, into EDI, it's happening before sleep. Um, let's try the same thing. This time let's search for instead of one, we're gonna, we, there's, there was at least one sleep 10. Um, and so 10 is going to be an A there. I think if I can type. Well, let me type an A there. Oh, it's not an A, it's a, a 10. So that's going to be, um, that's two. And we don't have a four, we do have an eight. So like that. So now we have a BF OA. If we search for all of those, we have, we have a bunch of those as well. Um, I can sort of just step through them, keeping an eye on the left side. And I can see after each of these, it's still asleep. So I can effectively get rid of those as well. Um, let's dismiss this. What about, can I just do a search on sleep? Um, are there any sleeps that are not 10 or 1? Doesn't look like it. It looks like if I can effectively get rid of those, I'll be done. Okay. So let's go ahead and write a little program to patch our thing. So we'll call it vim patch.py. 
and we'll make this user bin and Python three. And we'll import sys because I like to just read things off the command line. And so we can say with open sys.argv, so the first the one, so the, the first thing I pass in, read as a binary as f. Uh, we're gonna say binary equals f dot read. Now we can say mod equals binary dot replace. And we're gonna replace, let's, let's move this over a little bit, a lot. Let's find our, let's find our sleep in here. And here's a sleep one. Our replacement is gonna be this BF. So we're gonna do, let's see, it's gonna be bytes. And it's gonna be OX, BF, OX, O1, OX, 00, OX, 00, OX, 00. So that is our move one into EDI, which we already said was what we want. And we're just gonna replace that with this exact same thing, except we don't wanna put one in there. We wanna sleep for zero. Um, we can do YYP to put the same line next. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, except for I'm gonna replace in the mod. And now, whenever I had a BFA, I'm also gonna patch that out. And so now, mod is gonna be this exact same binary, except that every time it loaded into EDI, one or 10, it's now gonna load zero. So now I can do with open, uh, we'll say sys.argv1 uh, dash mod. There we go. Uh, and we're gonna write binary as f, and we'll do f.write mod. And that's it. That's our program. So we can do python patch.patch.py, uh, Ouija, and we've got our Ouija mod. We'll change mod it to make sure we can execute it. And we will run it. And it prints things out pretty fast. And you can see that these lines here that have just a single character on them look like they're a flag. Um, so there's a couple ways we can kind of cheat this to get it out. We can start to, you know, uh, I could do a grep here, and I could do like minus V to remove lines. And so I could start to say like, um, remove lines that say letter. And now it's looking better. Um, if I want to do like a dash E, I can start to give it more parameters. So I can say that now, like it means remove lines that are letter or that say done. And now it's getting better. We, you know, and so now we want to get rid of minus E wrapping and minus E, I guess I can, we don't need the disassembly anymore. Uh, minus E, what else one? Uh, leave. Now we've got what I think looks like a flag. And so we can say PR minus D for trans to delete new lines. And look at that. We got, you know, there's still some junk in here, but we've got our flag right here. Um, so method one, that's how we solved it. Um, method two, I think there's actually a cooler method. Um, I like this. Let's go into a new window. Oh, you know what we should do before we go? We should check in on our binary. Um, so we have got the H. <laughs> the H is printed while we've been working on this. Um, let's go back here. Um, I'm going to do what's, I'm going to do what's called hooking the binary. Um, and so this is going to involve writing a little bit of C code, but if you can stick with me, you don't have to, you have to have some idea of how C code works, but you don't have to be like an expert in this. Um, so I'm going to call this like hook sleep.c. This is definitely a more advanced technique. So um, feel free, if this, if this is un hard for you, like the way I just showed is much easier to do it um, for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna say include uh, stdio.h because I'm, I'm gonna wanna print something at the end. Um, now we're gonna do something, we're gonna do unsigned. So no, we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to get the sleep function. So let's do this. We, we've got the sleep function right here. Um, we've got, exactly how it's defined right here. So we'll grab this and we're gonna paste it in. Um, and now we're gonna just define what we want sleep to do. And what do we want sleep to do? We want it to do literally nothing. It has to return as, returns a number because it takes an int uh, and that's it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compile this in such a way that it's a shared library and we're gonna compile it in such a way that it takes priority over the standard sleep. And that way, when the binary is going, oh, I need the sleep function, it checks our stuff first and says, oh, there's the sleep function, and it does that, and it never gets to the real one. Um, and so in that sense, we've hooked the sleep function and given it our own. Um, so we've done that. Um, one thing that's nice to do when you're doing this, just to troubleshoot, is you don't have to do this by any means, but you can add attribute uh, constructor 
static void setup void. And this will just be when the library gets first loaded, how does, you know, what I want it to do. And I'm going to say f print f um, outstander std e, outstander error um, book process no sleeps. And we'll add a new line to that, like that, and we can close it. Now, again, this isn't necessary, but this is handy because sometimes if you're not calling it right, you might not be getting your library, and it's nice to know you don't. So um, we will come out of here. Now, we have some special compile instructions for this. We're going to use GCC. Um, we're going to make sure it's, it's going to be a shared library. We need the FPIC. I'm not actually sure why, but just we do. We need the LDL, which is, has to do with how it gets loaded. Um, so now we'll say hooksleep.c, and we'll call the output hooksleep. And it doesn't like share because it needs to be shared. And it worked. Um, we have our hook sleep. Oh, I don't want it to be called hook sleep. Hold on, let's get rid of that. Uh, we want this to be called hook sleep.so for shared object. Okay, so now what we can do is we can use a variable called ld preload, and we can say that equals uh, hook sleep. And this will be a list of any libraries that I want to load before I load the rest of the process. Um, there's actually a global variable I can set in a file in Etsy. Um, that will also take care of this, but we don't, we just want to set it for this current process. So we're just going to set it on this line here. And now we're going to call Ouija, just like that. And if it works, it instantly prints. No sleeps, no sleeps at all. I guess we missed something when we were printing earlier. Um, and so we can do the same kind of stuff um, to get rid of, you know, greps and things. We can also go through, um, if we want to be a little bit more, you know, cooler about it, we can look and say like, oh, it's calling puts here when it wants to put all this junk out. Um, but when it eventually prints the flag, where's the flag thing? It calls printf. But we could call, we could get rid of puts as well. Um, so let's come in here and we can say uh, vim hook sleep.c, and that, that name is no longer va totally correct, but let's go with it. Um, so we can do man puts. I'm always worry about what I'm going to get. Okay, that worked. That was fine. Came up fine too. Um, so we want puts right here. Let's grab this, paste here. And we'll put this in here and we can just say, again, it returns an int. So we will return zero and we'll do nothing else. And the compile again, we run it again and we're getting better. Um, can we get rid of those dots? Let's see what, oh, that was putting out single characters, wasn't it? Let's see, here's uh, put char. So that's gonna be right here, in fact. Um, let's come here, we can do that. Again, this is just, we want it to do nothing. We can do return zero, um, this, and compile, and run. And we're doing pretty good here. Um, we got the flag. So um, more advanced process for hooking would be figuring out how to actually maybe modify the data or, um, you know, only filter like only pull, you know look run the command that was intended but then remove certain results so like a rootkit might you know look for the process look for the types of calls made to look at the process list and then then get the results back and remove themselves from the process list and send the rest back on um so that's some more advanced techniques um but for this video you know just nulling them out seems to be good enough so um yeah i'm gonna go ahead and call it here hopefully you enjoyed this and i'll talk next time thank you Bye. Thank <laughs> you.